is going on welcome on to a video this is probably going to be my most requested video that i've gotten so far since this game has come out but no problem as always you guys ask i will deliver this one is going to be more of a shorter uh, kind of direct to the point uh, there will be a video later on every single shot type and what they do when it comes to spin and all of those categories so you definitely want to make sure you like and subscribe. Let's not waste too much more time. Let's dive right on into the video. So people want to know how I control. They watch me play and they're like, how does the ball stop pretty quickly? These greens are icy. They are fast. They are firm. And if anybody who is, and I'm going to be very honest, I might get some pushback on this, but anybody who's asking about like these greens are being unrealistic, like these are tour level greens like if you watch the masters if you've ever played on a course of this this level and this stature you know that these greens are actually just like this um the standard that 2k has has done where you can hit a three iron and get it to stop within four or five yards that's very unrealistic to how actual pga level courses play and it's something that i really appreciate about this game is the ball mechanics and the physics actually are very very real so how do i get it to stop well the first thing i would say you have to look at your golfer right so it's something that people didn't realize in the beginning but it's something that i focused on uh, my approach shots in my short game if you looked at the categories right it's in your approach control category it says increases natural spin if you do not have a high control rating you don't have the ability to create natural spin. Also, if you're playing on arcade mode, you don't have the ability to increase how much you can spin the ball. So this is a category that you definitely need to focus in. You can see here that I actually haven't put recovery on either of my shots and I am not struggling in recovery because I am staying in the fairways and I can control my spin, control my ball flights and anything I do I'll show you on my spec wise on how I do recover them as well. But you'll see here that if you go through these categories, the approach shot is the one that's going to have the most spin when it comes to full shots. Finesse will be a little bit less, but it's still pretty spinny. And then knockdown will have, we'll keep it under the wind and it will have pretty much the most. A lot of these are realistic ball flights, right? So it's like real, you need to understand to, in order to control spin, you really need to understand how a lofted wedge affects spin numbers and how wind affects spin numbers. So that's like the really big thing. And that's why control is really important. And then I also pre-warned you guys when they were in the store, I wasn't sure how long they were going to be there. They are gone now, but the Hideki iron spec Look at the control numbers on the iron spec that I was able to purchase. Hopefully they bring it back into the store soon, but I have 90 control on all of my irons. That is a big factor in me being able to create natural spin and stop the ball. I also have, I got Dustin's, I think it's Dustin's ball. Yeah, Dustin's ball. Increased my spin from 25 because everything basic and the uncommon is 25 all the way up to 75 control And then like the wedges just got another one as well From 25 all the way up to 72 like this is how I do it. You have to preset yourself for success Obviously in the store right now. There really isn't anything that good uh, maybe the ball there's a legendary ball control that you might be interested in. It can get you all the way up to an 85. I don't really have enough uh, VC for that right now. Otherwise, I would be jumping on that right now. So definitely go check that out in the store. Now, I, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm just going to go in. I'm going to play a par three, a par three that I play quite frequently, simply because I do a lot of my testing on it because I think it's a pretty good one. And I'm just going to show you some examples of spin and I'll talk about how wind affects it. Well, let's give it a try. So I'm gonna talk about it. I'm also gonna clip a couple videos and I'm, I talk about it on my live stream. I get asked about it a lot. EA and Sports I literally talk PGA step by step what goes on in my head about Tennessee how I control these shots. TPC so Southwind feel free to hop in, in a live stream every once in a while Rich and ask Lerner a question. Joined up in the booth by um, um, all right, so we're actually downwind in this one, right? To get the so flowing. in this situation, in you need to understand yeah 
going downwind um, is going to be very, you know, very, very, green, very, green, very green, difficult to stop the also, ball. You know, so a, you kind of have to take soft, your medicine. We're going downwind night. and um, downhill. And also, you know, the only the way the to get it to stop really green is if like it's brand new. you want... We'll join the action on the team. These guys need to stop talking in my head. But the only way to get it to stop going downhill or downwind, downhill, is if you hit a lofted wedge. So what the lower the loft, or the higher the, the 60 degree, it will have the most spin. If you go all the way up to a four iron, that will have the lowest spin. This ball is gonna be very hard to stop. So the closer you can get to the wedge, the more likely it's gonna be able to stop. If you hit a punch shot, that is gonna be very low, it's gonna be very runny, it's gonna have no spin, and it's going to not be able to stop. The knockdown shot is one of my favorites because it takes the wind out of it. It does reduce the spin from the approach shot, but it takes the wind out of it so you can pretty much get it to stop pretty quickly. And it's one of my favorite shots to use. Finesse shot will have a little bit more spin than the, um, than the knockdown and a little bit less spin than the approach shot. So those are really your options when it comes to the situation. So if we calculate this in, right? So the flag is uh, down eight feet, so just about three. So it's playing 154, and then we got about 10 at our back. So it's really playing about 144 is the number, which means that I'm actually hitting a pitching wedge. So my pitching wedge, because I have control, and I'll, I'll hit it, I'll hit this one. Because I have control, I'm actually able to stop this pretty good. So we'll hit this up, and we're just gonna play it pretty safe. But because I have control, like look how good I can stop Solid that. If I take that control, if I take Solid my specs off, around, that ball is going to roll on and it's going to be very icy. All right, and if we wanted to use the finesse shot here, you could definitely use the finesse shot as a, as a good option as well. And you'll notice that I always hit underswings. It has less power, which means it has less spin. And you can see they just run on a little bit. So if you really want to control spin as much, you're going to have to hit the full approach shot. So in that situation, you're going downwind, right? So like that is a, that's the hardest situation possible to get the ball to stop. I showed you three different it, how to control it, but really your approach shot is going to be your best. Whatever you can get the most lofted club in your bag in that situation will be your best to get it to stop because you want to send the descent angle in the best situation possible. So now we're looking at a different situation here, right? So now in this situation, we're looking at an into the wind. So we're going same thing, down three, so it's still 154, but now we are going into, so we have to add about 11. Probably a little bit more because it's usually 1. 1. 1.5 in this category, so probably about 13. So that puts it at 167. So 167 in this situation, how do I control spin? Well, you could let the wind really affect this one, possibly give you a wind gust. But in this situation, I actually like to hit the knockdown. Why is that? Because if you hit the knockdown, you keep it below the wind so the number stays pretty accurate. But the wind will not let it roll out. It's going to add spin to it, and it's going to pretty much get it to one hop and stop. So if I hit this 163, I said it was playing 167, but we're gonna keep it below the flag here. You're gonna hit this shot up. And you can see how it, it pretty much stops on a dime. Obviously I was just a one, one or two yards short there. I just pushed it a little bit, but you can see how quickly that can stop. You just have to understand what the wind does to it. Going downwind is gonna push it very hard. Going into the wind, it's going to allow you to hit longer irons and stop them pretty quickly. So going back into this situation, you can see if I hit the finesse shot here, right? So I hit the finesse shot. Let's watch how quickly this one will stop. 166 was the number. And it stops pretty good. So those are the two shots that I really like to hit in these situations. That's how I like to control it because I feel like when you hit the regular approach shot, especially into any windy condition, it's going to spin a lot more, especially when you get a wedge. 
with Frank Navalo by my side. I'm Rich Lerner. So now we'll, we'll hit weekend golfers. No, there's always we'll hit the full full eight iron in here with the full approach. You gonna be looking at here today? So I'm showing you guys the different examples. So this one should spin the most. You can see it was affected by the wind. You see that? See how it was affected by the wind the most? Like that shot is it's just really hard i even played it it's just really hard to judge you want something when you're playing into the wind that is much less spinny so that way you can control it a lot better so that's why i really love the knockdown shot the knockdown shot stays pretty straight pretty accurate the wind will knock it down and you can get it to stop pretty closely to what your number is if you're ever hitting into the wind i really like the knockdown shot now let's talk about wedges because that is super important um, and the rules still apply when it comes to the wedges as well. So this is where your wed wedges and controlling your distances is where the biggest factor is actually going to be and it's where using the finesse shot and the knockdown shot becomes so much more important than the actual approach. So if we actually compare what we're actually trying to do here. So it's playing down 23 feet which is just about 8. And then we're also going into just about an eight mile an hour, probably about six miles an hour since it's not directly in our face. So those are going to kind of counter each other slightly, and it's pretty much going to play uh, about 111 yards. Now, if I hit this 56, right, and I hit it full, which means a wedge, a full wedge, to generate speed, you need, I mean, to generate spin, you need speed. So the more speed you apply, the more spin you're going to have. So if I hit this full, which is what I'm in, I'm in drive, which is also the approach shot. This ball is going to spin. It's going to spin a lot, and it's probably not exactly what you're looking for. I mean, you can definitely play that shot, but there, in this situation, there's actually not that much room behind the flag to allow the ball to spin. So how do you control spin? Well, you need to use a shot because we're going into the wind that won't spin as much. And how do you not? How do you get it to not spin as much? You take the wind factor out of it. So now we're actually going into a little bit heavier wind. But if I use the knockdown shot, right, the wind's going to counter that spin. It's going to spin it up a little bit. And this is actually playing about 116. So we're kind of in between clubs here. I could hit just short of this flag, which wouldn't be the, the worst thing. I like to usually hit partials, so this actually wouldn't be a very bad thing for me. I would just hit a, a partial swing here, a little underswing. Right? Hit a little underswing. Watch how much this doesn't spin out. See how it just doesn't spin out when I hit that shot? Two reasons. One, I'm hitting an underswing, so it's not as much power. And then it's also a knockdown. So the knockdown keeps it below the wind. It keeps the spin out of the situation. It count, it balances the playing field. But a lot of the times you are gonna be in between clubs and people don't like to hit underswings. So in that situation, use the finesse shot. Don't hit these full shots when you're hitting into the wind with a wedge. Because if you're doing that, you are hurting yourself. So this one was about 112. A little underswing there. But you can see it doesn't spin back very much. The next shot, knockdown shot. And you're hitting into the wind. So now let's talk about long irons, right? Everyone wants to know how do you stop these long irons from going way past the hole? So you just have to understand a couple of things. One, like I said, you need to know your skills and your attributes and your specs because those are super important when it comes to long irons. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get the ball to stop quick enough and it's gonna seem like the greens are very icy. Um, this is just, it's just a tough situation. You also have to just, you know, pick and choose. Not every flag is like 2K where you can just land it next to the flag and get it to stop within three feet. You have to get creative. You have to use the slopes appropriately and make sure the ball doesn't run out too much. Uh, so this one's actually playing 188. And you wouldn't really, if you are going into a long iron situation, so if you're using a five, a six, four iron, you don't really want to be using the finesse shot or the knockdown shot too much 
because like this is gonna run on a lot, right? So the flag's actually playing 187. So like if I'm hitting a knockdown with the six iron from this distance, right? Like you're gonna have trouble stopping this. See how you're just gonna have trouble stopping it? Like you don't wanna do that. You actually want spin. Spin is gonna be your best friend in these situations. So you wanna be hitting more full approach drive shots. Welcome in, everyone. Whatever you can use to get the lowest, and I don't really use power approach too much because power approach takes even less spin off of it. But if you're hitting a, like I get a seven iron into this situation here, and because I have a really good control, I'm hitting a full shot, so it should add a good amount of spin to it. And it should actually stop pretty quickly on the green. See how quickly I can get that to stop? But that's because I have really good control specs, I have really good control ratings, and that's essentially how I'm able to do it. You have to set yourself up for success. So I mean, that's pretty much I, how I control things. I'm gonna I'm gonna put up a couple more examples that I have from my live videos, some longer holes. Um, but I've gone through wedges, I've gone through iron shots, I've gone through long irons. I hope this stuff helps. You have to pick and choose your battles. Understand the wind. Understand the elements that are going to be affecting your ball spin, and use that to your advantage. Stick to the finesse and knockdown shots whenever you're hitting into the wind, unless it's over 185 yards. Let me know down in the comment section if this helps. Let me know down in the comment sections if you have any questions. Um, as always, you guys know the drill. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos coming out. I'll catch you later.